Okay, so here are the two Marvins, the movie Marvin and the BBC TV version of Marvin. And um, as you can see, you've got the color change eyes in the head. The on-off switch on the back. I went in with a latch door mechanism. <clears throat> this door part is actually three pieces. When you print the door, you print it flat and put supports in these areas, then clear that out. Then the slide piece is one piece, and then this knob on the outside is your third piece when you glue the knob onto the slide piece. I had to add uh, cutouts for the notches on the door to fit into. And once I added those cutouts, that uh, tended to put some error messages in the body. But even with the error messages, it prints just fine. And as you can see in the paint job, I uh, looked through all my paints out in the shop and I found this uh, kind of a metallic metal flake, kind of a, they call it ground coat, uh, silver. Originally you would put this on whatever you were going to, I don't know how to explain it. They sold these translucent spray paints to give you an anodized look, but before you put the translucent spray on, a red or yellow or a blue, you would put this ground coat in first, which was kind of a reflective. And I kind of liked it. There was just enough left in the can to uh, do these parts. Then I went back in with the brush and uh, painted up the black parts that I saw in the original costume and did a little bit of detailing so the chest would stand out. Went in some uh, aluminum foil tape here around here and around the neck ring like you see in the uh, actual costume then this is uh, painted on silver around the eyes and the mouth <clears throat> so I'm gonna show you the uh, the body file so hang on we're gonna slide over and stare at the computer here here we are so here's the body file and I'm in uh, Prusa slicer and I just printed it to a standard 0.2 quality PLA setting, no big deal. But uh, here, and it won't show up very well in light gray, you can see the little triangle. That means that it knows that there's some some errors that it hasn't known correct. It says it auto-repaired eight errors. Here, I'll click on it, and then I'll hover over it. It says auto-repaired eight errors. Uh, four degenerate facets and four facets removed. And I can right click to fix it through NetFabs, but if I do right click to fix it, it just locks up and never does anything. So without fixing it, it prints just fine. So there's no reason to print it. But when you do print it, here's what you need to do, or at least what I did, is um, select uh, support for enforcers only, and then come over here to the uh, paintbrush because then you can paint it where you want the supports to go on. You want this upper part of the battery thing to be supported because see how it comes out? If it was straight across you could just bridge it but because it comes out you can't bridge it and get a clean print there so just run your paintbrush along there and it'll go okay I need to add supports there. Then on the inside underneath this battery box where that hole is we need to support it we might as well just support that whole thing. So we can uh, tip this like this. We get the inside of that. And then basically, like so. And that should uh, allow you to print it with just supporting that part. This is a sacrificial top. It's just uh, two layers of plastic thick, so 0 0.4, and you just go in with an X-Acto knife and cut that out when you're, when you're done. Now, when it comes to actual supports, I like, uh, I'm going into support material, then I'm going into the type of support. Don't go with grid, because it's a lot. The organic is what we're going to go for. And I'm going to go over here and say slice, so we can see what the organic's going to look like. Maybe I should zoom back. Okay. 
So it makes these organic tree-like supports. And the nice thing about this, if I'd gone with the regular one, it would have built it up and left more stuff to break away. These little tree supports just go where I wanted them, nowhere else. This whole tree just lifts away. Very clean. And on the inside, you put little tree supports to support that bottom edge of that battery box around that hole like we wanted. Very easy to remove. Works very well. So, that's the secrets to uh, printing the body. Ignore the fact that it says it needs to be repaired. It will slice and print and just fine. Put the supports in like I showed there. You should be good to go. And there we have it. It's our two Marvins. Is there anything else left to say? Um, this is the N20 dual shaft motor. This is the uh, 30 RPM around 3 volt, but I'm running at 4.5 volts because I have uh, three uh, AAA batteries in there. As you can see, when you put the battery box in, center it so there's gaps everywhere. Gap on the bottom, gap at the top, gaps at the side. So in other words, glue it in the middle. Because that way I can take the red wire off the battery box, run it down this side, go to that hole that we saw there, go through that hole, and solder it to the switch. Then, in my case, I grabbed another red wire, soldered it to the switch, poked up through that hole, ran that red wire up this side, and back out the top. So then I have my black and my red wires coming off, and they've gone through the switch, and none of it's going to get in the way of the motors or the gears. I'm not sure if the red wires are showing up here. Let me uh, see if I can turn the light on. Hmm. I guess it's light enough in the room I can't force the light to come on. But trust me, there is a red wire back down in there, and there is a red wire in there, and they both come around and had them just poking up. Then I had two wires on the motor that you saw in the video before, and they're poking up. And the two wires coming from the head and the LED, which I currently limited, and also threw a capacitor across the flashing LED to stabilize it from any noise from the motor. And you can join all those wires together because you've got basically the whole top of the body to uh, cram those wires down into. The arms, there are 632. In this case, I used 3 quarter inch long, but I could have used something shorter, like 5 eighths or something, and a couple of springs, and uh, tightened them in so the arms are spring-loaded so that they can stay wherever I put them, and I don't have to worry about it unscrewing or anything. Super stable. Um, no... Uh, wombling around at all. Very good walker. Very happy with the way it, uh, way it looks and the way it ended up. I think it makes for a, a much better looking toy than it did a costume on the TV show. It looked kind of goofy in the TV show, but as a toy it's uh, very unique, very good looking.